Hello, everybody. Welcome to stage two and this afternoon's track on digitizing traditional industries. My name is Claire Barrett, director at APIs First, and I'm delighted to introduce you to a fantastic lineup this afternoon. The format of this track is three talks and then the opportunity for you to ask questions during each talk of each speaker via the online chat. And then at 3.15 finish time, we've got all three speakers coming back together for a panel conversation uh, on some of the more common themes and observations. Uh, and importantly, that's your chance to answer further questions. So get ready for that. Um, put down your thoughts and, and um, ideas and observations in the online chat. So this afternoon, we've got Sophie Rutel from Mueller MS. She's going to be talking about digitizing from an insider's perspective. Hannah Pugsari is going to give us an architectural view on traditional organizations and their digitization plans. But first up, I'm delighted to welcome Xiao Jin Chen. She's CEO and founder of VenturePol, and she's going to share her experiences and views on digitizing venture capital. Welcome, Xiao Jin, XJ. Um, we're really looking forward to your talk. Can you? Pleasure um, to be right here. How are you going today? Good. I'm good. I'm excited um, to be joining API Days today. Fantastic. Um, so perhaps if we could start your slides. Um, you've got uh, 20 minutes or so. And we'll look forward to, um, to your talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Claire. Hi, I'm Xiaojing Chen, the CEO and founder of VenturePool, an investment platform powered by AI. I was born in Taiwan, grew up in the States, worked as a consultant in Hong Kong, and did my PhD in management in Switzerland. I also learned programming and data science and built stuff at a dozen hackathons. Now, these pictures were mostly taken before the hackathon. We don't look like this after not sleeping for three days. In early 2016, I started angel investing and immediately found it to be extremely manual and cumbersome. Most investors to this day still use Excel spreadsheet and Google search as their main tools. I couldn't find a better solution, so I built one. VenturePool was born to solve my own problems as an investor. As soon as I became an entrepreneur, I fell into the gigantic diversity gap in venture capital. Why does venture capital need digitization? Because it's very broken. Last year, only 2.3% of venture capital money went to female founders. Yet, female founders make higher returns for investors. Now, you may think it's because there aren't that many female founders. No, women are building businesses everywhere. Then why don't investors invest in women? Because investment decisions are made by people and people are biased. VenturePool is an investment platform headquartered in Switzerland. We're on a mission to make venture capital faster, better, and equitable. It is also my personal mission to help female founders and founders of color raise money. We have clients and partners um, all over the world. And here are some of our international clients and partners. We've built smart tools to help startups get investment ready. These tools factor in the diversity surplus, but they also augment investment decisions made by investors. So investors like me make better investments higher returns, less bias. Now I'm gonna show you these tools live on our platform. This is our uh, platform live. And let's say I'm an investor interested in health tech. 
I use the industry filter to search for health tech startups. These are real startups that are listed on our platform right now. Okay, and I see ShareMed. Hmm. Looks like an interesting startup. Let me enter their private deal room. Okay, so in the private deal room, I have everything I need to know here about the startup. I see the investment risk rating and it tells me that ShareMed is high risk. Let's open graph. Now I get an overview of how ShareMed compares with other similar companies in VenturePool's global database. It's a database, um, it's a proprietary database. Um, we, acqu uh, we acquired three different global business databases into one and merged them into one. Okay, and right here in the private deal room, I have a valuation range from methods that are widely used by investors. Okay, this is the most important figure in venture investment. For me to decide whether or not I make an investment, the valuation is the most important. Currently, it takes my team of six analysts two weeks to get this figure, to get the valuation. And to have an objective range to work with is amazing. Then I have an analysis of ShareMed's company strength and weakness. It shows me where they have made the most progress and also points out where I can help the company grow. Due diligence is standardized and automated on VenturePoll, saving me a lot of time and money. I can also share notes with my co-investors to streamline the investment process. Because of VenturePoll, now I have a better overview of the startup right from the beginning. And all of these valuable insights about the business help me make faster and better investment decisions. Because now I don't base my investment decisions entirely on whether or not I like the team, which is what um, investors do. Now here's the QR code to our LinkedIn company profile. Please follow us to learn more about the digitization of venture capital. All of our tools are free for startups forever and investors get a 30 day free trial. Now imagine what NASDAQ would look like if women founders get equal funding. Thank you. Now let's open the floor up for some questions. Thanks, Claire. Thank you, XJ. Gosh, what a um, uh, a set of you know uh, fascinating insights that you uh, you gave us kind of so succinctly. But I'd really like to actually perhaps go back and explore in a little bit more detail. So Absolutely. you um, you started out by talking about the performance of uh, female led or influenced um, uh, in, uh, businesses and startups and founders. Um, and uh, obviously from, from your own experience, and then you got to share with us how you're disrupting <laughs> the industry of venture capital, which is kind of um, um, ironic, given that one thinks of it as a, as a vehicle for disrupting <laughs> so much of what are traditional industries anyway. Um, so, so as a female founder um, and coming up with a tool that uh, um, solves a problem that, you, that you've had um, as a f female investor, um, what is it about this, this fact-based, evidence-based view that you're getting from VenturePoll that is uh, 
um, changing the sorts of decisions people are making. Um, yeah, so, um, and, and here I share um, my own experience as a female founder. So we know on average, it takes about 30 to 40 um, investors to for a startup to close a round. On average, we need to approach 30 to 40 investors to close a round, specifically the seed round. Now, it took me um, double that number to close our seed round. Um, and so this is This hits, um, this, this makes this, this problem, this diversity gap in venture capital hits very close to, to home for me. And um, it is also the, the main reason why every time we decide on which new features or new product to develop, we ask ourselves, is it moving the needle? Which, which product or which features moving the needle the most to close that gender gap? Um, and, but at the end of the day, um, it's hard to change uh, behavior. So our approach is to make our tools and our platform so valuable. We're offering so much value to investors that you just have to use 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 our tools, um, and this is what um, we have done. Uh, we have several international accelerators um, as well as institutional investors um, as our clients. But we're we're a very young startup. Uh, we were we were only founded in twenty eighteen, um, so we're we're young and we're sort of the new kid on the block. Um, we really look to collaborate with existing big players. Um, although you're absolutely right that um, disruption is definitely on our agenda. Thank you, XJ. There's a question um, from Alan Knaber in the, uh, in the chat. And he's asked about this, it's how do you make this human connection beyond the data uh, as being especially relevant at, for early stage startups that might score badly if they're looked through a pure data lens? Um, although I think, so perhaps you could tell us a little bit more about what's behind the, the database to provide you know, evidence across maybe some of the less traditional ideas of valuation. Um, so we know from research that 90%, over 90% of investors um, see the team as the most significant factor in their investment decisions. And we know that most investors meet the team in person before making that decision. Um, and they actually meet them before they do deep due diligence. So this personal um, connection is actually the most important factor on whether or not an investor invests in a company. Um, and we do not need um, more, uh, we do not need to enhance this, this, um, this process because um, this is exactly the reason why investment decisions are biased. This is exactly why less than 3% of all VC money goes to female founders and less than 13% goes to founders of color, including male ones. Um, so what we try to do at VenturePool is we try to provide objective um, insights to help 
augment this investment decision, which is already driven by personal connections or impressions or this gut feeling, this mysterious gut feeling? I hope that answers the question. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm going to double check with Alan, but uh, I think it is. And please, if anybody else in the audience um, has other questions for um, XJ, uh, this is a, a great opportunity to hear from uh, not just an experienced um, uh, leader and investor, um, but also uh, the facts around the facts and the emotions behind the types of decisions that go into um, choosing where to fund and what to fund in. Uh, which I think is, uh, you know, is hugely relevant for the audience on different elements because we've got people who are uh, in um, uh, startups themselves and or you know, leading those and or they're um, looking for opportunities to partner with them um, or looking for ways in which they can uh, broaden the types of um, decision making that comes into, into play. Could you, would you be able to, I mean, appreciate the... Um, uh, you know, perhaps the confidentiality, but maybe you could give, maybe, do you have any examples or stories, if they're anonymous, that's fine, of uh, decisions that have been, that have resulted in a different outcome through the venture pole style of um, insight and analysis? Um, that's, a, that's a really good question. Um, so we, we're a partner of the biggest accelerator here in Europe. Um, and we work with their health tech accelerator. And um, we help, um, so the accelerator itself is an investor, is an institutional investor. It, how it works is it, it selects um, a batch of startups that they invest in. And um, so what we have uh, been doing with um, HealthInc, the Health Techs Accelerator, is that we help them um, select the final winners to the accelerator. Um, and these winners, these winning startups, receive the investment. Um, and we get I, I get feedback from um, the accelerator saying that um, this one pager really um, makes our uh, investment decision process a lot more efficient <clears throat> because we're able to see all of the essential uh, information on a one pager. And it, but it also highlights uh, questions that we need to ask. And these questions would normally take us over 140 hours of due diligence to find, to, to, to find um, these potential problematic uh, areas that we need, to, we need to know about before we make that investment. Okay. Um, so we've got um, a follow-up question from from Alan, um, which is is sort of um, looking at the persona from the startup perspective. So um, he's uh, um, observing that he thinks maybe early stage startups would struggle a bit with this model, um, that they'd need someone to believe in the concept more than the numbers. And do you have any plans to make connections to the team? Um, for example, with an anonymous avatar or whatever. So, that, so, so what's your proposition, if you like, to, to start up uh, founders and, and leaders themselves with this type of approach? How's, how does it, you know, what's the different experience for them? <laughs> um, thank you, Alan. This is, this is a, a great question. We, also from, from, from research, because I'm a researcher, we know that um, investors spend less than four minutes on each pitch deck. And most time is spent on the financial slide and the team slide. And you're absolutely correct that most early stage startups don't have a financial slide. So then most of the time is spent on the team slide. 
And um, now I'm also a startup mentor and I always tell my mentees that you need to help investors uh, learn about you. Um, that, that's, that's your job as, as, a, as a founder. And in our, um, on our platform, there's a startup dashboard. I just showed you the investors dashboard. But on our startup dashboard, there are due diligence uh, questionnaires. There's a virtual um, database, data room where startups can upload and share the most important information about the company. Um, and so this uh, helps the startups get investment ready because then we, we're giving them a checklist so that they can check, okay, um, these are the most important documents I need to share. The, these are the most important questions I need to answer. Check, check, check. Um, and also for, for, the, for the team, um, this, is, this is in our R&D pipeline. We are currently developing um, an algorithm that would automate team due diligence. Um, and we're using an we're using natural language processing, um, more of that AI technology. So this is in our pipeline um, where we want to help investors um, when they meet the team, they ask smarter questions because then we'll be um, aggregating and uh, presenting an executive summary on the team so that they can bring in to their interview meeting with the team. Um, so, so, and so here's an advice um, for startup founders. Digital marketing is important, not just for the company, but also for you as a founder. This is um, hopefully an actionable uh, tip for startup founders. Thank you. No, that's, um, uh, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, um, I think we're nearly at time XJ. So, um, just wondering if you can uh, give any sort of, you know, in your finals, give us, give us a tip for startup, startup founders, a quick tip for um, people um, looking to perhaps contribute into investments in some way um, and, uh, uh, and also some uh, where people can go to get some more information beyond the QR code around uh, VenturePole itself. That would be fantastic. Right. Um, so our website, VenturePool.com, um, we just we just revamped it uh, this January. Um, so I and, and and we have a news and blog section where um, we post about um, news on digitization of venture capital, how technology is transforming um, a rather conventional industry. Um, so be sure to check that out. And uh, more advice for, um, for founders um, and investors is to, is to call in. So we, we, we call uh, people out. And then we, you know, there's this call out and cancel culture. What I'm um, advocating is a call in culture where um, we realize that over 88% of check writing investors are um, middle aged uh, Caucasian men, we, th th this is a reality, um, but 
it's helpful that we um, we use a constructive, productive approach to tell them that, hey, you have this power to close this gender gap, to move the needle, to make venture capital equitable. Um, and it it is beneficial for everyone, including you, because investing in diversity makes higher returns. Diverse teams make more money on exit or on um, or on uh, whether on their ability to um, survive the first five years, which is the most usually the most um, risky phase. Um, and we know that female founders and founders of color, one, make more money, 64% more profitable, but also, um, and, and also higher exits, um, if the, the ratio is higher exit, so a higher return on investment. And also we survive uh, the most risky times, which maybe now. <laughs> um, we're going to have to, um, thank you, XJ. That's just um, amazing insights. And we've got an opportunity to get you back um, right. uh, to join our panel shortly. Um, but uh, I'm going to now introduce our...